Hi, I'm Steve from Steve's How To In 5 and today we're looking at the effect of controls. So what actually happens when I pull this stick back, push it forward, push it to the right, push it to the left, and of course we've got the throttles and we've got the pedals that operate the rudder at the back. So I've done all my pre-flight checks, I've actually warmed the aircraft up, so let's go flying. Murray Bridge traffic, Jabiru 3740 taxiing from the front hangars to Hold Point Bravo, Murray Bridge. So we've been over the aircraft and we've done all the checks and we've done the DI and um, if you were with episode one, the aircraft we're flying today is a Jabiru, it's an SP470 and um, episode two of course we had a look at doing the daily inspection so we've done all of that. Episode three, the flight instruments themselves and of course we're going to um, going to shift the location of the camera in a sec so as we can have a bit of a look and we can watch the instruments while I'm actually flying but we'll just pull up here on the pad uh, at Murray Bridge Airfield in South Australia this is referred to as Bravo and although I've already done the engine run-ups I'll just bring the revs up again bring it up to about 2000 rpm and have a quick check there with my ignitions we've got the dual ignitions we saw in episode 3 with the instruments one off off. Okay, so we can bring those revs back and we have uh, hardly any any alteration at all about, uh, well not even 50 RPM. So uh, that's all good. Um, there's not a lot of aircraft in circuit here today at Murray Bridge so we should be right to um, enter. Backtrack on runway 19, we'll get up into a maybe three and a half thousand feet, three thousand feet, something like that and we'll have a look at the effect of controls. Bridge, Murray Bridge traffic, Jabiru 3740 is entering and backtracking, runway 19, Murray Bridge. Now we're backtracking and we haven't heard any other aircraft on the radio, however, um, their radio may not be working or they could have had an issue or they haven't transmitted, whatever it may be, so constantly we want our eyes out of the, out of the cockpit, we want to have a good look around and just check there's no other aircraft and there'll be no conflict. Uh, generally it's pretty good, but you know, it only takes something like the transmit button on a switch or a fuse in the radio. Um, it can be a minor little thing and the aircraft call that they thought they have made, an incoming aircraft, you haven't heard it because of something like that. So I'll always have a good look around while I'm taxiing. Now when you're taxiing, of course, you don't want to be going down at takeoff speed but you don't want to be dawdling either or going too slow because other aircraft are wanting to use the runway. So just get a nice, comfortable pace where everything's under control. That all looks good. So we'll get down to the end here, we'll line up and uh, we'll get rolling. So we've done all of our, uh, our checks now. We've got the area Q&H right. We've got our attitude set correctly. Uh, it's time to roll. Make sure carby heat is off, of course. Time to flick the fuel pump on, give our rolling call. Murray Bridge traffic, W3740 is rolling, runway 19, four circuits, Murray Bridge. And ease the throttle on, we don't want to just belt it on flat out, ease the throttle on, and gently lift off, we've got one stage of flap in, we'll just pull those brakes to stop those wheels vibrating, you can see our airspeed is coming up now, I should have pointed that out when we actually started rolling. One of the things we want to do there is make sure that our airspeed is active. We can see some movement there as we start to roll out. We still keep an eye out for traffic, but it all looks pretty good. In this aircraft, I'll climb at 80 knots solo, uh, meaning on my own, around the 80 knot mark, 75 to 80. That would usually give us about 1,000 or 1,200 feet per minute. We were up there at about 14 or 1,400 feet then. So now we're well over our 500 feet above ground level, we can start to turn on our crosswind leg, we look out to the right, and that all looks good. Again, a little bit of fog appearing on the windows there, and we're pretty well up to circuit height now, so we'll level off at 1,200 feet, look to our right once again, and then turn downwind. And as we turn down, we just give a quick radio call so people know what we're up to. It is a training airfield. Murray Bridge traffic, Jabiru 3740 is turning downwind. 
Runway 19 will be departing the circuit from this leg and tracking to the east. Murray Bridge. So what we've done there is we've just let people know, yes, we're turning downwind, uh, which we have done, and we'll be departing the circuit from the downwind leg. So when we get late in our downwind leg, I will turn out to the right and give one quick call, just saying that I've departed the circuit and what altitude I'm going to be climbing to. And then we'll track off to the east and we'll have a look at the effect of control. So here we are, we're clear of the airfield, well clear of the airfield. We've got lots of fields and paddocks below us. If we, were need, if we needed to land somewhere, we could do that. What do these controls do? Now the air is a little bit rough, but hopefully the gyros in the camera are taking that, um, that roughness out. But the first thing we're going to look at is the control stick or the joystick itself and hopefully you can see that in this shot what does it actually do if i pull the stick back half an inch we're getting along at about 2000 feet vertical speed indicator is showing that we are traveling nice and level all of the gauges are in the green we're doing about at 90 or 98 knots um, at 2600 rpm Let's pull the stick back half an inch. Now what should happen is the vertical speed indicator should go up and show that we're climbing. Our airspeed, I'm not going to alter the throttle. Normally you would use some extra throttle as you climb. I'm not going to do that in this case because we're just looking at the effects of the joystick itself and what the elevator... So now moving to the rear of the plane, if you look at the elevator, now that's the elevator wobbling there. Okay, and you can imagine if I were to pull the stick back, the elevator goes up, as the air pressure hits that, it will push the tail of the aircraft down. That will in turn bring the nose of the aircraft up. If I want to descend, of course normally we just pull power to start descending, but if I want to bring the nose down rapidly, I push the stick forward and you can see that the angle of that elevator now has gone down. The air pressure hitting underneath it is going to lift the tail of the aircraft and that will in turn push the nose down. That is doing at the back of the plane. So stick back half an inch. We just pull him back half inch and you can see now the vertical speed indicator has gone up. Our altimeter, we are climbing. Our airspeed has deteriorated. We're back now to 75 knots. Oh, about 80 knots, 75, 80 knots. It's varying a little bit. I bring the nose back down. We've come from 2,000 feet to 2,300 feet in that climb. We bring that back now to zero, about 2,250. So what I'm going to do now, without decreasing the throttle, which I normally would take a little bit of noise off, I'm going to push the stick forward half inch, and let's, what, let's see what happens. Vertical speed indicator should indicate that we're going down. Our altimeter will start to reduce. We'll take it back to the 2,000 feet where we started. And of course, our airspeed will increase. And we want to be careful here that we don't increase our airspeed too much. There goes the vertical speed indicator. She's gone down. Altimeter is showing that we're decreasing. Airspeed has come up to 110 knots. Generally, of course, I would reduce the throttle here, but I'm not doing that for this exercise with a little shower of rain. Off to our right. So gently bring the stick back again, back again, we'll get back to about that 2,000 feet, a whisker over 2,000 feet, that'll do. We've got quite a heavy shower of rain in front of us there, so we'll try and get a few left and right turns out of the road before then. And we're back to zero. So we'll get our SP, we're sitting on about 100 knots. Indicated 98, that's where we started. We're at 2,000. 100 feet, just bring that back a whisker, that'll what do. What we're going to do is pull the stick across to the left, so as the ailerons. So what is actually happening? Okay, I'll reach into the plane and I'll just grab the joystick. If I pull the stick to the left, you can see the left aileron goes up, so the air pressure hitting that aileron is going to push that wing down. And if you can see across to the other side of the plane, you'll see that the aileron itself has gone down. So the air pressure underneath the wing is going to hit that and that's going to lift the wing up. If I go the opposite direction and I go to the right, 
you can see now that this aileron has come down. So it's going to lift this wing. The aileron on the other side has gone up. So it's going to push that wing down. And that's how you get your left to right bank. It's all about the amount of air pressure going over those ailerons and where the ailerons are in respect to the joystick itself. We'll see what's happening with the ailerons and I want to put in a little bit of left rudder. So we'll look to the left, we'll clear, there's no other aircraft there. We want to keep that vertical speed indicator. The road, we don't want it to climb, we don't want it to go down. So we watch the horizon and put the aircraft into a nice balanced turn. Now that's about half an inch of about half an inch of stick. I'm watching the horizon and if I can keep my eyes on that horizon and watch the horizon as I go around looking for aircraft all the time, we keep it nice and balanced, bring it back to the centre and we've done a balanced turn. We haven't made any altitude, we haven't lost any, but a nice big shower of rain in front of us over there. So what we're going to do now is a nice balanced turn to the right. So look right of course and clear and once again we don't want that vertical speed indicator to move. We want to try and keep the airspeed about the same. It shouldn't vary if it's a nice balanced turn. We want to keep this little ball here in the centre. We don't want the ball to go out of centre and I'll show you what I mean by that in a sec. There's a nice balanced turn to the right, we stay just nice on the horizon, so let's level it out again here. So now we're going straight, level, you can see we're not climbing, we're not descending. The rudder pedals. Now, we showed in, uh, I think it was when we were doing the TI, in episode two of the series, that the rudder pedals work the nose wheel, but they also work the rudder. And a quick look at the rudder and see just what's happening here, so I'll get in the aircraft. And you can see if I push in that left rudder, the rudder itself comes across to the left. The air pressure hitting that will push the tail of the aircraft to the right, and that will make me yaw around to the left. If I want to yaw it around to the right, I push the right pedal. And you'll see the rudder now has come across to the right. So that's going to push the tail of the aircraft to the left. If the tail of the aircraft goes to the left, of course the front is going to the right. Does that sound confusing? I guess it does. But that's what's happening. And it's, it's really simple. And in this type of aircraft, you have to balance the yaw of the aircraft with the roll that we did with the ailerons. I'm not sure if you can see them in this shot or not. And as you go a little bit of left rudder, you'll come in with left aileron and get a nice balanced turn to the left. And if we want to come around to the right, we'll do the same to the right and get a nice balanced turn. Same as they do on a boat. So, but we need to use a little bit of rudder when we put in the aileron. If I just get the rudder now, and what I'm going to do is push the pedals, like this, left and right, you'll see the aircraft yaw. See the nose of the aircraft is yawing all over the place. It's uncomfortable, it wallows. So we need to balance. If I just try and turn, do a left turn with just the rudder alone, it will turn, but it's not balanced, the ball moves off centre, the nose started to drop a bit, it's not a balanced turn, hence the reason we put in a little bit of rudder and a little bit of aileron. Whenever I fly a Cessna or a Warrior, of course, I tend to overturn initially for the first five minutes because you really don't need a lot of rudder, if any when you do the turn, but in this type of aircraft, you certainly do. So what I'll do now is we'll do a little bank to the right, and we'll keep, keep our horizon just right, and then we'll roll out of the bank and come into a left turn. So we'll go half an inch, oh, yep, clear, half an inch, we turn into that turn. We don't want the nose to go up or down. We're watching the horizon. It all looks nice and neat. And we're going to roll out of that. We'll bring the stick across, apply a little bit of Left rudder, check there's nothing there, a little bit of left, and we make the aircraft bank now to the left. Bring it back again, and we'll bring the stick right over to the right. Check we're clear, and we balance the turn, and we keep the aircraft coming across now to the right. Bring it back to centre, and now we're just on the track that we were. Actually, we did start to lose a little bit then, just as we came out of the turn. 
mainly because I'm not um, watching the horizon as I should. And that's how the ailerons, elevator, and it all works. It's really straightforward. It just takes a while to get that balance where you tend to push a pedal and an aileron and you do things. Once you get balanced at doing this with the aircraft, you can keep the VSI exactly where it's meant to be. You're not climbing, you're not descending. That takes a while. Your instructor will teach you the correct way to do that um, as a student pilot. Eventually, you will get the hang of it. It all maybe looks a bit awkward or hard or whatever it may be, but it's not. You'll soon get it. Well, that about does it for episode four. Hopefully that's given you a bit of a guide as to what the controls do in this aircraft. This is a joystick aircraft. Um, if you saw my Quicksilver, the GT500 video, that has a yoke, but it's basically the same. Pull the yoke back, it'll climb, push it forward, it'll start to descend. If you turn the yoke to the left, that's the same as putting in left aileron. Turn the yoke to the right, the same as right aileron, or moving the stick to the right. But as I said, that's about it for episode four. In episode five, we're going to do some circuit work. We'll get over to Murray Bridge Airfield and we'll do some circuits, some circuit procedures. Um, hopefully this has helped you if you're thinking of getting into flying. And once you have done it for a while, sitting next to an instructor, you will soon get the feeling of it. It is nowhere near as awkward as you are as hard as you may think it is, um, it's, it tends to come natural. I've been doing it for a long time now, but as you can see, although it's not that late in the afternoon, there's a bit of cloud moving in, conditions are getting a bit dark, probably not good for VFR flying, so hence the reason I've got the throttle open here. We're getting along at about 115 knots. Uh, we want to get back to the airfield, get on the ground, put the aircraft in the hangar. Um, but yeah, so that's it for episode four. We'll catch you in episode five. Cheers. Ralph, I can see you hiding under there. No, I told you you can't come today. I've got to do some filming. The effect of controls. Out. <laughs>